in Jabba's palace, an unexpected visitor has arrived. This man is not one to wait, and cuts his way through the guards. Darth Vader has come, and he will speak to the hut. At the Dark Lord's request, Jabba dismisses his audience. The hut has no respect for the Sith, calling him a Jedi, and threatening to turn Vader over to the rebels for a sizable bounty. Jabba summons his guards, but they are no match for the Sith Lord. Within moments, the men are dead, and Vader states he is no Jedi. While the peaceful users of the Force might try simple mind tricks, Vader prefers to get what he wants through the raw power of the Force itself, and begins to choke the hut. Under duress, Jabba agrees to the Sith's terms, and Vader explains he is here on a personal matter, and begins to tell the Crime Lord exactly what the Darth needs. One day earlier, at the Imperial Palace on Coruscant, Vader reports in to the Emperor. The rebels have recently attacked and destroyed a production facility on Psy Moon 1, which will be another serious setback to the production of the Imperial Army. The Emperor is furious at Vader's recent string of failures, and no longer trusts the Dark Lord to lead the Empire. The Sith Lord is then ordered to go to Tatooine, while the Emperor refuses to tell the Dark Lord the identity of a mysterious agent who is in Palpatine's office. Before the Master dismisses his apprentice, the Emperor asks if there is anything else Vader has to report. The Sith Lord thinks back to some things he has recently seen, a Force user that destroyed the Death Star, and how Ben Kenobi gave this young man his old lightsaber back from his time as a Jedi. But he does not inform his Master of any of this. After meeting with Jabba, Vader gets a hold of two bounty hunters, Boba Fett and a Wookiee called Black Kerr Santan. Vader orders Boba Fett to find Luke Skywalker and bring him back alive, as the Dark Lord has plans for the young Jedi. As for the Wookiee, Vader wants him to capture the agent who the Emperor is talking to earlier, as the Dark Lord wants to know what his master is planning. The bounty hunters are confident they will be successful, which pleases Vader, who stands over a tribe of sand people he just slaughtered. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden, and this is my recap and review of Darth Vader number one. So I think it's pretty obvious why I picked this issue out. I mean, it's Darth Vader after all. I've never been a huge fan of the writer Kieran Gillen, and I have seen a lot of bad reviews of some of his other work, so I had some pretty guarded expectations when it came to this new Star Wars series. But on the whole, I was quite impressed. The art was very well done here, and honestly, it's probably worth the price of admission alone. We get some great panels of Vader in action, and it's by far the best part of the comic. There is some really nice dialogue, and I was pleasantly surprised to find that the series actually does tie in with the Star Wars comics. I'm glad Marvel's doing this, as I'm excited by the idea of these different comics interacting with one another. I wasn't sure if this was going to happen with the Star Wars comics, but I think it's a cool idea that they all kind of take place within the same time period and with the same larger setting and story. There's some potential here to do some fun things with the various comics Marvel plans to make out of the Star Wars franchise. Unfortunately, this is undermined by the storytelling which I found rather weak. The story jumps around a lot in regards to time, but not in a way that ties this comic nicely together. Instead, the comic is confusing because it moves all over the place, and it's very difficult to follow. I'm also not really excited by this story. I think that's the issue with a pseudo-prequel like this that takes place in between A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. We know that this story is going and exactly what's going to happen to Vader, but I don't feel like there are any kind of big surprises coming our way. So I can't say I'm all that pumped for what happens next in the Darth Vader Star Wars series for this reason. In spite of all this, I might still recommend you check out Darth Vader number one for yourself. The art and dialogue is enjoyable enough, and while I find the story weak, it wasn't that bad and there are definitely worse ways to spend the $5 cover price. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. We also have a website and Facebook page if you'd like to stay updated on our latest videos. I'm also happy to announce that we've officially started using our Twitter account, so you can join that too if you'd like to stay updated on all the latest regarding our channel. And finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.